Who is Gordon Ramsay? No, Gordon Ramsay needs Gordon no introduction, Ramsay. Uncle Roger. He is British chef. Hi, uh, British <laughs> chef Uncle again. Roger got PTSD Roger from Jamie Oliver. This video. Chef Brian Sow here, not your typical chef. And today I'm going to be reacting to Uncle Roger review Gordon Ramsay fried rice. I'm excited for this one. Before I go on, I am going to be announcing the winner of this month's giveaway, which is for an official Chef Brian Sow cutting board, so make sure you watch to the end. Also, it would mean so much to me if you took a quick second to follow Mission Sandwich. Is it this way? This way? It's the official account of my upcoming sandwich shop due to open in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, this spring. If you're new to the channel, I am a professional chef with 17 years of experience. I've defeated Bobby Flay on the Food Network show, beat Bobby Flay, as well as run the world-renowned kitchen of Beauty in Essex located right here in New York City. The views and opinions expressed in this show are exactly that, just my personal opinions based on my years of experience in the kitchen. This is meant to be for fun and educational purposes, but also I don't always get it right. So if I don't, let me know in the comments below. I love to learn and I would love to hear from you guys. And with that out of the way, let's watch Gordon Ramsay make some fried rice. Okay, you see this? That Those are brand spanking new walks. I haven't really dived in, even dived into the video yet, but I will tell you this. You know, Gordon Ramsay, his content is very polished. He has a whole team working behind him. They obviously wanted to get brand spanking, really pretty new kitchenware to be placed in the video. They probably didn't want something old and beat up. However, I will tell you this, that wok is steel. In the past, I have owned a Chinese restaurant before involuntarily. That's a whole nother story. But when you get these woks brand new, they're made of steel and they're clean like that. And you have to season it. You actually have to heat it up, pour oil, burn it out and season the wok for it to become nonstick. And right off the bat, I'm hearing Uncle Roger screaming and ranting about um, Gordon changing walks. Maybe it's because the product that he was cooking stuck to the walk and was starting to burn. And uh, now he has to change walks so that the material that's stuck on the walk that he was using doesn't get into the final product. That's my prediction. We're literally two seconds into the video, so let's keep watching. Change the walk. Uncle Gordon Roger pissed. Walk. Oh my God. Who is Gordon Ramsay? No, Gordon Ramsay needs Gordon no introduction, Ramsay. Uncle Roger. He is British chef. Hi, uh, British <laughs> chef <laughs> Uncle again. Roger got PTSD Roger from Jamie Oliver. <laughs> this video. British chef let Uncle oh, Roger down. And so Hersha Patel. Times. They mess up egg fire rice. So simple dish. Egg fire rice only have three ingredients. Egg Pie and rice, and you still mess up. I think Uncle Roger gonna hate this video. I'm using eggs, but some leftover rice to do. Oh, okay. Now, all right. Leftover rice. Now I see why oh. Uncle Roger's so happy. Okay, okay. Awesome. Off to a great start. Not First that I'd expect any it. less from Gordon Ramsay. Starting Dude, with day old rice. Classic rice. The nasty goreng. This is. Oh, and he say nasi goreng. Nasi goreng is Indonesian word for fire rice. I think Gordon downloaded Duolingo. Gordon, you don't rice. mess with the Gordon, man. Huge. Okay, and this type of rice is only grown. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> Gordon. Yeah, touch the rice. Fill up the rice. Sorry, <laughs> Uncle Roger got carried away. Okay, real quick. <laughs> Other than um, Uncle Roger getting turned on by Gordon Ramsay fondling some day-old rice, I just wanted to point out, you can really see the grain separation as he's, yeah, you see how he's like going into it. You don't really see it stick too much to his hands. This is not a good view right now, but that's a benefit of using day-old rice. The grains won't stick together as much, so you'll have really nice rice separation as you cook it to turn it into fried rice. I'm gonna the eggs first. Start this Ooh, off. Uh, awesome. Again, He's frying up the eggs first. I mentioned that in my um, other Uncle Roger Reacts video to Jamie Oliver making fried rice. I mentioned that, you know, in my experience, uh, as far as how I was taught and learned to make egg fried rice, at least a Chinese variant of it. Um, I mentioned that Japanese and Korean fried rices, it's very common to put it in, put the egg directly into the rice after you've cooked it a little. But what Gordon's doing is he's breaking his eggs. He's probably gonna whisk it and then pour it into the wok in really hot oil. Gordon, 
where are you filming this? It seems <laughs> like you are in middle of nowhere, like stranded on an island, and then you suddenly decide to make fire rice. I'm gonna quickly just chop the chilies. Okay. Actually, chop I like chilies. that. I guess he's setting up his like. misan plus. Misan plus is getting all your prep set up. Your putting it into place. That's what Misan Plus translates to. Remember, uh, at least in a restaurant setting, I should say, and you should apply this to your home too, but in a restaurant setting, they're not going to chop the vegetables to order. All those, you know, Gordon mentioned that he's chopping up some chilies. In a restaurant setting, they're going to have the chilies already chopped up and they'll have it in a container enough for what should be the day's worth of chili. Some places that are super high volume may prep one or two days worth of ingredient in advance. But as I mentioned, Gordon is getting his ingredients put into place so that when he's ready to make the dish, he can dive right in without any delay. Everything is set up right in front of him, ready to go. Many Asian people, we have two kitchens, outside kitchen, and we have indoor kitchen. Indoor kitchen, useless, only to impress guests. <laughs> if guests come, we go indoor kitchen, chop mango, that's it. But if we use outside kitchen, then when you know real food coming, if you go visit some Asian people. <laughs> yes. Okay, so uh, Uncle Roger is from Malaysia. My wife is Malaysia. I've been to Malaysia. My wife is not literally Malaysia. My wife is Malaysian. I've been to Malaysia and I've seen that exact thing. And you know what? Oftentimes, the best food that I've had in Malaysia comes from an outdoor kitchen. Like, it's just a kitchen outside. It's dirty as fuck. There's like patio furniture, not the not the nice patio furniture. I'm talking like the cheap plastic patio furniture you get from Walmart. That's how you know it's going to be a good restaurant. <laughs> Um, but I did see my uh, wife's relatives, especially in her small town. It's called uh, Dunjong Malim. I don't know if I pronounced that right. The houses out there uh, definitely had the indoor-outdoor kitchen thing. In the city, at, in KL, uh, that wasn't so much the case. There isn't as much wide open space. In fact, a lot of people live in apartments in, in the big city. But yeah, outdoor kitchen, the food's being made in an outdoor kitchen. You're pretty guaranteed you're gonna have awesome food and what's also funny is there's all a lot tons of stray dogs too so when they clean up they just like toss the shit onto the onto the floor and then all the dogs come and eat it so they have like this built-in cleaning mechanism and, uh, over that i'm gonna start grating okay the mm. That's nice touch okay Oh, it's Galangal. Galangal is Hell yeah. authentic I'm uh, sorry, I keep talking over the video, so I didn't hear that Gordon said Galangal. Galangal looks very similar to ginger, but it is a completely different product. Don't quote me on this, but I'm 99% sure it's like pretty, uh, It's well, I know it's indigenous to Southeast Asia, but man, Galangal is just, I, I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's, it's so distinct. And that is a really nice touch for this fried rice. Indonesian ingredient. Oh, he know about <laughs> Not oh. many white people know about <laughs> Galangal. A bad chef would just use ginger. A really nice dense sort of okay, scallions. Spicy on those blossoms at the end. I think Gordon got every step right so far. Just one small thing. Maybe you need better skincare. You got all the good <laughs> cooking skills. Maybe you need some moisturizer. But don't worry. Go ask Jamie Oliver for his wet rice. Put the rice on your face. <laughs> moisturize instantly. Yes, that was my main complaint about... Well, everyone's main complaint about Jamie Oliver's fried rice. He was just soaking wet. He literally put water into it. Gordon Ramsay have a wok. The okay. wok looks charred on bottom. That means he used the wok before. Very nice. Okay, I wouldn't necessarily say that. This clearly to me looks like a brand new wok. I mentioned that earlier. They got it probably just to film this. Um, it takes a long time to get a wok seasoned and get it coated in carbon to make it non-stick. I think that's just carbon that formed from sitting on this burner during filming. I'm pretty sure that's it's a brand like new burner. It's not like he know he need to make fire rice, then he buy a new wok. No, no, no. Nice and warm. Okay. I want to sort of get that round. But I saw him put oil in there earlier. I also really using a whisk like in the wok. All right. Western tool. You know. And it looked like clay stove. It looks so heavy. And he cooking in yeah. the middle of nowhere. That means he made a poor Indonesian guy carry this stove for him all the way to the middle of deserted mountain. <laughs> Uncle Roger, like, this is secret to good egg fire rice. Poor <laughs> cooking. Oh, all right, a few things to mention. When I've worked in, in uh, re uh, Chinese restaurants, wok stove enclosures all stainless steel. However, the, uh, the part that's holding the burner 
That's all concrete. In this case, uh, you know, this is clay. And that does a couple things. Number one, the burner is super high powered, but by having the concrete, or in Gordon's case, the clay, it actually, it also insulates the heat and then makes the heat much more consistent. So you have this uh, high powered heat source that's very directional but then the heat gets trapped by that concrete or clay, and then it kind of surrounds the bottom of the walk with a very consistent heat. It also, uh, when you do this, the burner doesn't have to work as powerful to reach that same intensity because there's a much more efficient transfer of energy that's going on when it's insulated like that. Like think of, um, think of like your cheap Home Depot Weber, round Weber grill that's just like metal versus a smoker that has really thick gauge metal and or sometimes they can, um, really expensive ones can have like a clay bottom or something like that. Again, it insulates the heat. Your charcoal in the case of a barbecue or a grill won't burn as fast because it's being insulated. So again, it's working much more efficiently. Same thing with the wok. Let me, okay. Okay, all right. I don't think that that wok and burner was not hot enough. When, when you work with a wok and you turn on that fire, and you put oil in, it's gonna hit the smoke point within seconds. That's how powerful it is. And when you pour, pour raw egg into hot oil at its smoke point, it will cook almost instantly. Of course, it'll take longer with the more mass, but I'm telling you like three, four eggs into a normal size wok where the oil has hit the smoke point, you know, you, you pour it in, it bubbles up, it fluffs up, and you have to stir that fast. You have to work really fast. He had enough time to pour it and whisk it, and it's still, wasn't cooked or wasn't even really shown. You see, it's still pretty raw over there. So to me, the burner was not hot enough. It's not detrimental though, because you see he is going into another wok and I'm pretty sure it's because when he poured the egg in there, the wok cooled down, started to stick like crazy. The wok would look like shit but if you kept cooking in the same wok, that egg will, well, the stuck on egg will burn and that'll get into his final product, which is not what he wants. Change the wok. Change the wok. <laughs> and Gordon bugging out wok? Uncle Roger. That is two more <laughs> wok than all the British chef out there. Oh, oh my God. Even Uncle Roger at home, I only have one walk. Uncle Roger. Uncle Roger's so impressed by the multiple walk, walks. The Although it's not uncommon walk. in, um, you know, the kitchens that I, when I worked in, uh, where the, the walk chefs had two, they basically each worked with two walks. That was very common. They would have one walk that was predominantly used for frying. Like that walk would always have, you know, a bunch of oil in it and they would have a strainer. So they would throw in protein product or vegetable, whatever that they need to be cooked at a very high heat in oil. The other walk would be for like boiling and sauteing. They may be working another dish or another component for the same dish. But like I said, very common to see more than one walk. In the household, that's a different scenario. Okay, rice going on, going in. Day old rice, nice grain separation. Ooh, so much wok hay. I like. And uh, oh yeah, the wok hay part. So in the uh, Jamie Oliver, Uncle Roger video, uh, when I explained the wok hay, kind of broke it into two parts. Should have set it together. I mentioned that the wok hay is when the oil hits that smoke point, but that's not what wok hay is. Wok hay is a combination of so many things. It's something that's so unique to woks, which is it hits that smoke point. That number one will flavor the dish. Number two is because of the way the wok is designed, because of the super high powered heat across a big surface area, that is your cooking area and your and the way the wok's designed to keep the product in motion, I always described it to young cooks as it's micro searing or giving like these consistent uh, micro caramelization slash Maillard reaction. Well, that's for me, but essentially caramelization. And it gets, because the product is constantly in motion, it's 
getting that searing consistently all over your product, whether it's vegetables or a grain of rice or or a, a, a nugget of chicken for, you know, General Sow's chicken, you know, whether it's authentic or not, the principle is the same. It's giving this very distinct flavor because of the high powered heat, the food is kept in motion and it gets that sear consistently around it. In Western cookery, where they're working on conventional burners on a saute pan, you can get clearly get caramelization, but typically, Typically, the rule of thumb is don't move the product around because you need to let it sit in the heat to get that sear, to get that color. But if you do that on a walk, the shit will burn. But again, it's it's a completely different design, completely different approach for that. You have to keep it in motion. Very interesting stuff. I, I, you know, a lot of fun. Little touch of sambal in the middle. Nice sambal, chili paste. The Beautiful. Rendang. Ooh. And Ooh, rendang. nice, nice, oh. nice. Uh, so he's not using, you know, he's not doing it. Obviously, he's, he's filming this in Indonesia. He's not doing a Chinese varietal where typically Chinese fried rice, they will use um, like a sweet soy base to flavor and salt the rice. In this case, he's using sambal paste. That's going to go wonderfully with those fresh cut chilies. It's going to give acidity. And he also used rendang paste. Rendang is also is a paste with a lot of spices and just look up rendang. I, I, I'm not gonna do the definition justice by going off the top of my head and I don't wanna take up more time. Look up rendang. Rendang is this wonderful spice paste. It's so aromatic and so flavorful. That is the flavoring that he's using for this particular fried rice. And this is, again, he's in Southeast Asia. He's filming this video in Indonesia. This is a very, very Southeast Asian style of fried rice, and it is phenomenal. It, this, I'm drooling just thinking about the end product. This is the correct red paste. Not chili jam. I think Jamie <laughs> Oliver went to Indonesia once he had some. Ooh, and man. Then he loved some Jamie food. Oliver's never going to live this down, man. This thing is red paste. He come back to UK, he go to Marks and Spencer. <laughs> and just buy any red paste he finds. Put in there. Mm. Get that, literally. No chili jam in this one, man. So this product's coming together so nicely. He's Again, he started with the eggs that had the vegetable and the chili in it. By the time the rice is ready, the, the string beans would have been fully cooked. He put in day-old rice with a lot of grain separation. That egg broke up as he sauteed it, so it's going to have a nice mixture. You're going to have a lot of consistency of egg to rice to um, string beans. And then at the end... He's putting in his flavorings. When everything's nice and hot, the dish is almost ready. You don't want to put in these flavorings in the beginning because they will burn and they will morph too much in flavor. You want to put it in the end, maintain its integrity, spread it throughout the product, you know, cook it, get a little bit, bit of that wok hay on everything from the sauce, but not too much on the sauce. And that's why you put it in at the end versus what Jamie Oliver did, put it in in the beginning, the shit burned, and then you had to recover by putting water in there. He, he was oh, practically made kanji. Very smart to put into egg fried rice because you can put all the MSG in your sambal. <laughs> this is how we trick white people to eat MSG. Why you feel MSG so weak? <sighs> That's so true. Listen, if you look at a majority of like some of your favorite products uh it's you know anything that's processed or in a jar that just has this wonderful savory flavor savory element just it's like one of those things you can't get enough of look at the ingredients label and this doesn't go for just asian ingredients like look i mentioned in a previous video things like uh certain condiments pringles doritos like those types of processed foods look on the ingredients list monosodium glutamate msg you've been eating that shit so we Many people say MSG is bad for your body, but Uncle Roger say good food is better than body. <laughs> now, keep it nice and hot. Now, have you got any fish or chicken or even beef left over? Yes. Ooh, nice. Uh, so this is where, what I mean by the two walk system. At this stage of the game, if you had protein, and it was it would be cooking in that fryer wok and then you'd strain it out and then throw it into the fried rice and it's already hot so you only need a few seconds at the end to fold in that protein product but gordon was saying if you have any leftover beef or chicken you can throw it in at the end exactly gordon ramsay not vegan gordon if you want to use chicken use the chicken behind you they're just <laughs> right there they right there this chicken so stupid hi <laughs> chicken if you want to stay alive don't go near chef who's cooking egg fried rice <laughs> beautiful color on that rice oh it's coal it is coal 
nice in the burner. You can see it. It's not like really bright hot. So that's obviously been burning for some time. If they had started filming when the coal was really like fiery red hot, um, he wouldn't have had that issue of pouring in the egg and it not cooking right away. But, you know, his experience showed where he was able to recover. He knew that, okay, this is not coming out right. And before the egg was destroyed and unusable for this dish, he switched to another wok. That is what separates an amateur from a pro. Knowing the steps to take to recover if you run into an, uh, a, a situation where things seem to be going south. And someone that's experienced will be able to draw from their experience to know how to recover. Okay, he's taking it off the Bernie's. Two-handed action. <laughs> Not very common. <laughs> you won't see that happen very often. I've never seen in, in uh, the past restaurants where the chef will take the wok off the burner and spin it like that. Typically, the way they work it is that they never let the wok leave the burner. They're always resting it on the edge of the burner. And that's mainly so that you don't wear out your arm by the end of the day. Can you imagine lifting that giant wok off of the burner? How many dishes are they making on in a 10 to 12 hour shift? Their arm would be toast. The sign of a very experienced wok cook is that they never allow the pan to leave, really leave the edge because they're letting the wok rest, but they're still able to get the bounce and flip the product and keep it in motion. It stops the rice from sticking together. There you go. Yeah. Constantly tossing it. The rice won't clump together, stick together. It's constantly in motion. It's breaking apart. Awesome. So, you know, Gordon may not be the most experienced wok cook, but he knows the fundamentals and what steps he needs to do to achieve an authentic product. Uh, I mentioned that this is not very common in wok cookery. However, in Western kitchens, uh, you know, especially like when you're making salads or something like that, very common to have a big bowl and you toss it like that and you're pouring in the dressing at the same time. That's very common. Okay. Another good tossing. This guy like suck to soleil, but egg fry right now. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, look at that hustle. Uh, you see how fast and how much hustle Gordon has, you know, he's the product is ready. You got to get on, onto the plate as fast as possible to, so that the waiter can take this plate to the customer because every second that the food is not in the pan, it's cooling down. You want to get the customer the a hot food product. So his default is to move quickly and uh, get the customer their food. Relax. <laughs> Look, Gordon, why are you in such a hurry? You cook fire rice like you Uncle Roger's like, what's airport. what's the rush, man? And you know what? That's very common in uh, in in Malaysia. You know, every time I went to these outdoor restaurants, dude, no one's hustling. And not to say the food's bad or there's nothing wrong with that, but they're chill. They're just like, you're gonna get the food when I give you the food. That's beautiful. Beautiful rice. rice. Look at that. Mm. Now. Oh no! Oh no, Gordon. You left five grain of rice in your wok. Your mom coming to beat you up now. So when I was growing up, my parents always told me for every grain of rice you don't eat, that is a pimple on your future wife's face. And guess what? My wife's face is pimple free. Why is he out of breath? <laughs> it's rice to die for. You bake fire rice, not running marathon. This is, Uncle I love Roger watching rice. Gordon cook, man. You know, he's so cook. into it's it. He's just, he's so passionate. He's every step of the way. And even presenting, he's like, man, you know, like, look at my food. He's, he's, he has such command over what he does in the kitchen. I mean, and that is why he is as successful as he is like today. COVID. Funny enough, pretty, it's very common to see people eat with a fork and spoon uh, when I was in Malaysia. Uh, versus chopsticks. Uh, of course, there's going to be chopsticks. But like I said, the common thing was, you know, you had your fork and spoon and you push your food onto the spoon, and especially for something like fried Gordon rice. Respect and call him Uncle Gordon. Ooh, Let's see what I would love to one day be known as Uncle Sal or Uncle Brian. That would be an honor coming from Uncle Roger. Just shut the fuck up for 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> if you watch his UK shows, I mean, he is much more of a teacher and a mentor. He's much more calm and collected. He definitely loses his shit and curses you out if he sees something clearly wrong but he is his default is not this over-the-top character it's definitely for the american audience and which is what i think captured the world this over-the-top character but um you can't get you can't really get away with that kind of attitude in in today's kitchen no way you, you would you would get called into hr's office and fucking fired real fast amazing uncle Roger. 
such a love yelling at customer uncle. <laughs> Why you be with him so pussy? Can't even handle spice. Many people tell Uncle Roger, customer always right. And I say, no, Uncle Roger always right. If I'm going to grade Gordon's rice, I'm going to give it a solid 8.9 out of 10 for sure. You know what? Let's give him a 9. All of his, all, all of his flavorings were correct. All of his technique though you know not necessarily correct but he knew how to still get it executed you know and that's really important and that's the sign of someone who really knows their shit clearly he knows his shit a lot better than i do the amount of restaurants the worldwide presence he has i am a huge gordon fan i think that's pretty obvious good shit gordon good shit as promised we are announcing the winner of the official chef brian sal cutting board and the winner is Arctic Folly, hit me up. Hit me up on Instagram via the DMs so that I can ship you out your cutting board. Congratulations. I'm doing another giveaway for April, so make sure you check out the next episode. And if you can't wait that long, be sure to check out my merch store. Link in the description below. There you can get official Chef Brian Sow, Chef Kiss tees, aprons, hats, all kinds of cool stuff. Be sure to check it out. I'd appreciate it a lot. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. This was an absolute blast. Let me know in the comments below what you want me to react to next. And until then, I am Chef Brian Sow, not your typical chef, and I'll see you really soon.